Hi, my name is John. I'm the Senior System Administrator at Nutri Worldwide Inc. Uh, last month we wanted to test system configurations, but every time we tried to do that, we ended up disrupting users. Testing the configurations is crucial for smooth running of business operations. I wonder if there is any way in which we can safely test these configurations without our users getting affected. I think you should create a Salesforce sandbox. Creating a Salesforce sandbox allows administrators to test out ideas for changes, create workflow rules, and enable other features without disturbing users. The sandbox provides a copy of the actual live environment called production, which is stored on a completely separate server. Using sandboxes for development. Keep in mind the following points regarding sandboxes. They provide a copy of the configuration and code and in some cases, data of the production org. Application development should start in the sandbox and be tested prior to deployment. The sandbox is an isolated environment for application builders to make changes and test out ideas. So, in general, the sandbox is used as a testing and staging area for customizations and code that you desire to deploy to production. So, the deployment can take place using change sets or Eclipse or even through a package, but the bottom line is, is that Sandbox is essentially a carbon copy of your production org and matches all the configuration and any code that you have in production. Now there are some limited sandboxes that like the full copy sandbox and partial copy that will copy over code for certain objects. So if you want data brought over, use the full copy sandbox and then all the data from production will be brought into the sandbox. You may ask why that's useful. With a full copy sandbox, you have the benefit of testing out your code and customizations on live data. Whereas the developer and developer pro sandboxes, those don't actually bring over any data. So if you want to build out code on accounts, for example, and you want to test out and see if your code works properly, you're going to need to create some test records. Now, creating a test record isn't a big deal. However, if you want to exactly mimic the production environment, you probably should recreate an exact record from production. That way you're testing with the same record that's going to end up using that code in production. So let's go into Salesforce and check out the sandbox area. So I'm logged into Salesforce in the setup area. As I scroll down here, I can see that I've got several different sandbox options. I have the developer, where I have 24 available, and one in use. I have developer pro. I also have partial copy and full. Now, the difference here is that with the full version, if I have a full sandbox copy license available, what I can do is create that sandbox and see all of the records in the sandbox that originally existed in production. Now, I have some options here for the sandbox that I've created. I can delete it and just totally start over. I can refresh it, which will, as the name implies, refresh the sandbox with any customizations or changes done in production. Or I can choose to log in. Now, at this point, I'm going to choose to log in and click on this login link. Now, you can see here that the username is appended with dot .test. So, with the sandbox, anytime you want to log in, you need to go to test.salesforce.com or as you can see here, my instance number has already been populated. So now I'm logged into my sandbox for my production org. You can see in the top right hand corner, it says sandbox test because again, that's the name of the sandbox. Now let's check out the users in the sandbox and see what's going on with the actual users and the usernames. Now if I come over here, you can see that I actually have a dot test at the end of all of these different users. So anytime you want to log into the sandbox, you need to append your username with the dot test or whatever you choose to name your sandbox accordingly. Some companies will choose to name it sandbox. Others will name it after the application being developed. For example, if you're developing a human resources application, you might call it the human resources sandbox, all one word. So then you would append your username with dot human resources. So just keep in mind that it can be a little bit unwieldy to log in with these different usernames, but 
when you're naming the sandboxes, but ultimately it tells Salesforce that you want to log into the sandbox using your sandbox username rather than your production username. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.